Good morning. Welcome to this, your daily briefing. Um, I want to do the Harry Kane story um, today, but it occurred to me as I was kind of prepping for this that um, a lawful lot of this involves Daniel Levy and the what I have referred to over time as the myths of Enoch. So what we're going to do, if it's all right with you, is we'll zip through the cane thing today because that's going to be the massive 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 comeback story across the summer and then we'll do the the, the, the levy and enoch nonsense um in a longer form thing at the weekend with the token bird in the podcast and then that way it'll work better because otherwise i can i can go on for days um and we won't actually get anywhere right so we need to mentally clear the decks for the summer in terms of the start point of where we or how we look at the uh, possibility of a, of a Harry Kane transfer. And so I would suggest we break that down into a few sections, which are very easy to read and uh, very easy to understand. Relationship with the club. I think that's the, the number one. You know, how are things? I'd say his bond with the club is pretty loose. And this aspect is something that I think Kane himself gets shortchanged in quite frequently when people refer to Kane. And this comes from the business that Aldi, you know, he's one of our own, you know, he's good, good lad, you know, he's top of Well, yeah, he, he probably is, but he's also a professional footballer. He's a professional athlete. And I'm not saying that he views it as just a job. I think he would like to win everything as a Tottenham player in a Tottenham shirt. But I think he also is smart enough to realise it's never going to happen. So when we look at the bond that he has with the club, I think he accepts that there's a fair amount of emotional kind of baggage there, if you like. But it's like when he came through from nowhere to getting into the first team. It was a curious business because... I stand by the fact that it was his own bloody-mindedness that made him a success. And whilst Harry would probably be slightly more, um, uh, you know, humble in, in his wording, the reality is he, unless there's something that hasn't come out in the public domain, he wasn't nurtured particularly by anybody. You know, this is this is like somebody who um, was um, ended up in, in care homes as a, as a child and coming through to be a fantastic... Um, CEO of some philanthropic sort of uh, business or what have you. You know, it was a, a kind of against the odds tale. And he clearly took his talent and his skill, but his determination um, has matched those um, uh, footballing assets. And the turnover of staff in the, the uh, Hotspur way and whatever it was called beforehand um, it's just been huge. There's not been anybody there for for, 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 for for more than a few years. And he went to other clubs. He didn't really do anything particularly exciting. And it was the usual routine that Tottenham do with all of their players who don't spark into life, um, or, you know, under their care. He was passed from pillar to post. Um, and an absolute exception to this, and we've got two really good examples an absolute exception to this has been Ryan Mason. Ryan Mason showed us a little bit, but he clearly needed to bulk up, become a bit more um, grown up and a bit more aggressive and a bit more, you know, have a bit more self-belief. Um, and Norwich City allowed him to do that. But that's an atypical situation. So Harry Kane's made, made his own uh, path and so I don't feel that the bond, the, the relationship between him and the club runs so deep or so deep as some might suggest it. There's also the issue of tangible achievements. And this is something which, again, I think passes a lot of people by. Oh, Harry's happy to do it for the club. But, you know, he's a Tottenham man. You know, he's one of our own. These are all empty, empty, empty phrases. He is an immensely competitive individual. And this summer, he's going to be sharing dressing rooms with the other very best English footballers. And if you think that he's going to 
look these peers in the eye and tell them that, you know, he's a one-man club, and my one and only club merchant, um, I, I think you're a fool. And I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. I feel sorry for you because I think you can entirely misread the situation. And I think the topic of conversation is where is he going? Not, you know, have you made your mind up yet? But who have you chosen? Money and honours. And this is, the, this is the real killer. This is the absolute killer. Because this, we'll dip into Levy for a nanosecond here. But Spurs have proven time and time again. And it's all down to this one guy. It's all down to Daniel Levy and his mother knows best bollocks. To him, honours have to be viewed from the terms of a spreadsheet. Nothing else. So, a domestic cup has little or no value to him. The football is to look after itself. This is why he sunk the, the you know, his children's inheritance, or which is our, our, our inheritance, into the, into the stadium, by the way. But let's not get involved with, with that. Let's look at the actual outcome of the belief, the mindset, the business model, which is that the overriding priority is to harvest money because that's the way you get a return on your investment. The clue's in the name, English Investment Company. English National Investment Company, for those of you who can spell. So time and time again, Levy has shown that the priorities of Enig lie elsewhere. So when it comes to money and honours, the only time you're going to stretch that relationship between those objects of desire and Tottenham is when you break the thing in order to make something else happen. And what I'm talking about there is Gareth Bale. A million quid a month for a guy who scores against pub teams. Sensational. But in the scheme of things, Manchester City would be paying that money for a player who would score against Category A opposition. You see? So when he looks at money and honours, there's possible possibility, there's possibility there that he could go to Daniel and say, I'm on X, I really like Y. Y would make me feel a lot better about the world. I can cope with the lack of honours. I can cope with a new coach every year, every two years. I can cope with all of these things. I can, I can cope. But if you give me Y, that will cushion me. It'll, it'll distract me. From you know the the the, the misery, the, the feeling of the sense of having missed out. But what he won't do is he won't fulfil his ambitions. And he's an immensely competitive footballer. I understand he's the same with golf, with computer games, everything, everything he's involved with. And anybody who wants to contest the um slandering here of, of our, our our illustrious CEO. I made this comment to somebody earlier this morning and sacking Mourinho, forget Mourinho as an individual because that takes us down another, you know. But sacking Mourinho a week or whatever it was before a domestic cup final, this is the equivalent of you moving house. to an, I'm not talking across town, but I'm talking like to the other side of the country. This is the equivalent of you moving house a week before your... Uh, seven-year-old's birthday. <laughs> so you've got this child who, like all seven-year-olds, wants to have a party and invite all their friends around and what have you. And you say, I'm sorry, darling, but I've got a, a new job um, in, in Scotland or in Ireland or wherever, but a long way away from where we are right now. And um, we're moving house on Friday, so we won't be here. And there's no way... <laughs> <laughs> sure, as police swoop you in the middle of the night, there's no way that you couldn't hold off a week in order to facilitate your birthday party for your child. And th this is the calculating thing of, of leaving. He didn't consider that cup final for a nanosecond. Possibly, possibly, with the one caveat, the one little get out there that the last thing he wanted to do 
was to have Mourinho win the damn thing against all odds and be on a sort of tidal wave of appreciation. As he then says, um, I'm afraid uh, Mr Mourinho has been um, relieved of his duties along with his coaching staff. You know, there isn't, there isn't a clever way of kind of spinning that. So that, that's conceivable. That's conceivable. But otherwise, no, don't care about your birthday. Shh. I need to move house. That, that's where Levy is. So if we look back on all of these things, the tangibility, the, 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 the money and honours, and um, his, his, the, the trajectory of the club isn't one that matches top flight ambition. It'll take the, um, uh, the rewards of ambition. So if you accidentally win a Carling Cup 2008, um, that's fine. You know, we're not going to go out of our way. But in the general course of things, not a priority. OK, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, there's definitely going to be more tomorrow. Good luck. Keep it on.